or back people, and today we're bringing a film on the Miami Dolphins offense versus the Titans, and I don't really want to make this video uh, relive this moment, but here we are. It was definitely a, an extremely tough one to watch, was in a pit of despair last night, to be honest. Still am a little bit down, but hopefully making this video, which I didn't really want to make, but hopefully talking it out can be pretty therapeutic. They can move on from this, I can move on from this, and probably just gonna, you know, let some plays play in the background as I just talk out here for a little bit before I start breaking down some of them. And really, I think overall, you look at this loss, and it's definitely a, definitely a bad one. But at the end of the day, it is just one loss. But it's one of those things where it could be an even bigger thing. Because um, these types of losses can lead to, you know, kind of game-altering seasons. And it can go in a couple different directions. Like, how do you build off of it? Do you become worse from it? Do you become better from it? Or does it just like, hey, at the end of the day, it's just one loss. The Jets game is going to be so important for the rest of the season. Because getting to that 10-win mark, I think, is huge. Just to, you need to get 10 wins, really, probably to just make the playoffs in general. And because they, then they have a tough game stretch after that. But just getting back into a little bit of momentum. Uh, it's, it's a different Jets team than they faced just a couple weeks ago. And this loss, really, I know people usually, like, want to see, like, who you point the fingers at in this game. I don't know if there's any just like individual, whether it's a player or a coach that you point it out. It was really an all around poor effort. Everyone played pretty bad offensively, defensively. I thought coaching from McDaniel, especially in the red zone was bad. I thought Fangio uh, was not good in this one either. I'll get to the defensive stuff tomorrow, but really focusing on the offense in this one. Titans came out with a game plan. They uh, ran a lot of like cover two, Tampa two, and they did like with inverted stuff. They ran stuff that the Dolphins have not seen all year long they were really trying to take away the pass they doubled waddle and hill a lot in this game when hill was playing took away those reads um so that was like a big thing that's why they ran the ball so successfully because of the two high looks that they were seeing they were basically seeing some triple like three high safety looks almost like they were facing against the patriots clearly came out with that patriots type game plan so that's why i'm kind of okay with the passing game not being as effective because that's really what the Titans were game planning for and they ran the ball well and they didn't move the ball that horribly offensively. They just didn't execute in the red zone. Big time moments. Didn't run the ball down the red zone as we'll get to. They had a fumble snap. Too many uh, mistakes. And I really think the biggest thing with this game is injuries. Like they had so many injuries and that could affect the rest of the season. So they need to stay at least semi-healthy. The offensive line was horrible. Probably their worst performance of the season. And I think that's kind of where it all starts for this offensive group. They ran block. They, they did block the run pretty well, but it was pretty light boxes for the most part. Got to give them credit there. But um, they were terrible pass blocking. Tua did not have a good game. Uh, that's where, you know, most people will usually go to point the fingers. And, yeah, he definitely deserves some blame for this loss. But it was not all him. Um, probably not the main issue. I know people will talk about the Tyreek Hill effect and how much he changes the game. I don't think losing him was, like, obviously losing him is a big issue for them. But uh, overall, I really think having the injuries on the offensive line was the biggest problem in this one with how... Uh, much they struggled to finish. They did not have a lot of time to execute what they wanted, and the Titans came out with a good game plan, just looking over it, and, you know, hopefully they can just move on, go to the next game, watch this film, <laughs> not be too bad about it, and that Jets game is just huge, just for so many different reasons, getting into the rest of it, because at this point, <laughs> I mean, yeah, I would love to win the division, love possibly even get first seed, that's all nice, but at first, just try to secure that spot in the playoffs and then work from there because they're still not in a bad spot. They're still 9-4. They're still second in the AFC. It's not over. It's not a complete collapse. Yeah, there was some tough stuff to really work through, but overall, um, it's very disappointing, but the season's not over yet. I want to break down some of these plays. Like I'm going to probably do a mix of positive and negative, but the positive plays, I'm really only breaking down just to show what the Titans were doing, especially early on. This play kind of puts Waddle out to dry. Not a great decision from Tua to throw this. I mean, it is an absolute dot to fit this in here. Got to give him credit for that. But look how the Titans are playing this. This is really why I'm showing this. They're showing a too high look. This guy drops to be a deep five safety. Then Amani Hooker played as a Tampa 2, basically uh, middle of the field, like usually Tampa 2 deep linebacker. And he just sat in the middle and tried to take this stuff away. And then they basically have a bracket on Tyreek deep, too high look. And it was always inverted. It was never just straight up normal cover two or normal tampa two they're like have instead of having the safety drop deep half they have the nickel do it sometimes they had the corn deep out corners do it this time they're just playing in the flat and that's kind of how they did a lot of pre-snap disguises dolphins had some success against it but not a lot 
in the middle of the field like this. Most of their success came on the outside on some deep corners to Tyreek. And it was just a good overall game plan. And the Dolphins didn't do, like, usually that's how you beat this game plan is running the ball. And they did that effectively. They just didn't do it when it mattered the most. And they left too many points on the board. Here it is again, another example. Tight ends were just disguising all their coverages pre-snap. It's so hard to get a look off what you think this is going to be right here. Like, it looks like it might be single height. Boom, rotate down. Ends up being Tampa 2 again. They play it so weird. Uh, they just, Tua did a good job of, like, uh, IDing this stuff, especially early on. But with all these different looks, it just threw off the timing. And then they ran, like, quarters a lot, too, to take away certain things. They got some single high looks and had some success, but it just wasn't very often. Titans just completely changed their game plan like look how this ends up being tampa 2 this guy rotates deep half the other corner rotates deep half this safety rotates down to be a hook this guy is you know the middle field tampa 2 guy he's in the flat he's in the flat they get a decent look here and they hit the corner to tyreek to be effective but this really did give them some fits later on probably not going to show too many running plays because um they just i mean they had success it was a lot of basic stuff nothing like too crazy to show but i just want to you know show why they were effective you know they got these looks these two high looks that basically end up being three high with how they're playing it. Um, a lot of rotation pre-snap. The offensive line did good job run blocking. Like, they were moving the ball decently well. Like, when you're having a drive like this to start out, you got to finish this stuff. Um, I do think, you know, while McDaniel deserves some a lot of criticism for this game, one area he did excel was his play design, you know, motioning out the fullback. It changes just the gaps of everyone up front. And then you also have him sifting back all the motion is going this way with the offensive line. It gets everyone to float up, and then you just have a huge cutback lane for Mostert. And it was well executed up front, too. So you got to give credit there. But for the rest of the game, it just wasn't good. And really, the defense wasn't even that bad for most of the game. But they, oh man, they the Dolphins' defense absolutely collapsed in this one and really gave up the win. The offense wasn't great for the whole part, and they didn't execute down in the red zone. But at that point, they kind of got blessed with a couple lucky plays and they finally scored and gave them that 14 point lead and the Dolphins just couldn't finish. I haven't even really, I know I mentioned the injuries, but they lost Connor Williams in this snap. There was a couple snaps that were definitely low. Um, there's definitely been snap issues all season long. I think this one was a little more on lean. I know like throughout the year, it's been like a mix of Connor, mix of Tua. This one to me feels like it was more on Liam when I saw it, just a low snap and the two has to hesitate late and then they fumble and uh, just not great work. Liam wasn't good in this game at center. He's clearly just not a center. I don't think the guard play was very good. I thought Austin, Austin Jackson struggled quite a bit as well. You didn't see it. Like, they definitely need to get healthy. Health, like, they need... When I get to the defense, they definitely need Javon Holland back. They definitely need Armstead and Hunt back. They lost Connor Williams, which is an absolutely devastating, huge loss. They need Tyreek to be healthy, and he might not play. It's just... Dev like, really, they just got to take care of the Jets. They take care of the Jets, and the rest of the season is... Um, looks a lot more promising at least it's it's a tough schedule but they're in a spot where it's like hey we're still in a decent spot even if we lose some of these games beat the Jets and then hopefully you can split versus the Cowboys and the Ravens and win one of those games and then you should win the division most likely the Bills would just have to lose one of their remain remaining four now we're getting past that first drive Titans did a good job versus Dolphins in this game just getting pressure with only bringing four they uh First of all, I mean, Monty Hooker played an absolutely great game. They definitely disguise here uh, their coverages. Like, they might go back to that Tampa 2, but it becomes basically like a, a one robber where Hooker doubles Waddle here. And they uh, almost gets interception because him and Waddle are on the same page. That was another problem with this game, mis miscommunication. They only bring four here, too, and they just get too quick of pressure um, up front. Tua has to float away from it because uh, these guys are winning to the right side here particularly versus Robert Jones and he's expecting Waddle to keep going he doesn't it almost gets intercepted that would have been another huge negative play in the game but yeah just blocking up front miscommunication and then I think Tua just felt uncomfortable for most of the game here's another drive where the Dolphins were you know moving the ball decently like that other one they moved the ball down into decent field position and then had to punt from there this time they're running the ball all the way down the field it's first and 10 from the 30 they try to go play action and then they get sacked and that just basically ruins the drive. I'm pretty sure this is the drive where they had the block field goal as well. It's just, uh, they leave this guy unblocked. 
He definitely reads it. Usually when they're doing this stuff, they ran the ball effectively. You got to give this guy some credit because he just goes straight to the quarterback. He doesn't even worry about the cutback lane at all, even though they ran the ball all the way down the field. And it puts Jillian Hill in a very tough spot to get that block when he's instantly going for the quarterback. So it's just, I mean, a good individual play by that player. Uh, I wouldn't put too much blame on Hill because if that guy's first angle, he's supposed to like freeze here versus the play action or like bend it down. But for him to go straight to the quarterback is a pretty impressive play and it just absolutely blows up the drive then right before half they haven't had Tyreek in the in the game for a while a while this one seems to be on Waddle he said that's on me clearly expecting Waddle to go to the inside he you know put it towards the chest and Waddle sits on this I mean either way it would have been completed if he you know he slightly works the inside or he just sits but these things are just killing this Dolphins offense right here uh I mean first of all they were these safeties were aggressive as you can see like they're disguising pre-snap and getting downhill expecting that quick pass um without Tyreek on the field I mean they were doing it with Tyreek on the field so they definitely matched up pretty well versus this Dolphins team and they just offense was not able to take too much of an advantage by for the Dolphins not being able to like get anything going right before half right here the Titans end up going down and getting a field almost scoring two has to escape here just being uncomfortable again he tries to find a chain across the field Definitely another, you know, probably throw he probably just shouldn't even take. But up front here, they get some pressure on this left side. They were working a lot of twists and stunts. Yeah, his first initial reads not there. He's got to escape the pocket. He did a decent job making some people miss here, but he also f had some slips too, which you'll see later on. It's just overall, it uh, wasn't a pretty performance from really anybody. While it wasn't really like a pretty performance from anyone, I wouldn't say like I'm in super panic mode yet, you know? like with the players specifically and even some of the play calling like yeah i want to see the players play better but i wouldn't like give up on any of them it's just you know one really bad game sometimes this stuff happens you get out coached um this is the nfl you're playing nfl teams sometimes you're gonna have a bad one this is why i was like not worried about the dolphins not losing or you know they hadn't lost any team with a winning uh losing record yet that's take care of the game supposed to take care of because then games like that and they should have won this one very easily it was handed to them on a silver platter um and up front here this is a third and goal. The Dolphins did a good job driving down the field again. They are actually moving the ball decently well for how well the Titans defense played. Dolphins still found some success moving the ball, running the ball, some decent passing plays. And then on third and goal from the two, what do they do? They run a fade. Like, absolutely ridiculous. I hate this call so much. Look at all this. Uh, I mean, they motion this cross. This is a tough call. Like, if this guy isn't coming unblocked, they probably don't even throw the fade. They probably throw the quick out to Barrios. But Tua has to throw the fade with that guy coming in unblocked, make that quick decision. I mean, to me, I wish they don't even motion Barrios across and they just give Cedric a one-on-one -on -one to run like a slant because there's all this room to work with. But either way, they just end up becoming unblocked. They bring zero and it forces that ball to come out super quick. And the fade had no chance. It was never even close to being open. Eric back in the game and look how much attention he gets. And it's that Tampa 2 again. And this is really where... It started being super effective over the middle field. Look, look at what it happens. There's, based on the formation, they don't have to really be threatened from anything from this side of the field, especially working towards the middle other than the tight end. But Hooker, who's that Tampa 2 guy, just instantly cheats over, takes away this throw, which is, they usually, you know, he usually has to worry about the deep safeties and then like the second level defender. But now you have a guy who's like basically in between the second level and the third level to take this away. Tua does a good job, good decision, throw it down the flat, pick up, you know, five, six yards, which is, you know, smart. But that's how you can see how the Titans completely countered what the Dolphins usually love to do. Here's another big missed opportunity. The deep shot to A-Chan. Uh, Titans basically running quarters here. And they're really having a lot of attention because it's like third and four. A lot of attention's on Tyreek. And Tua is just reading this corner. He sees him hesitate just enough. So Tua launches it deep. Probably didn't have the best feet there either because he kind of couldn't really step into it. And then I think... It's not even that bad of a throw. I think A-Chan just slows down a little bit right. Right as he's about to go past this DB, he kind of gets bumped into him as well. and kind of just slows down. Like right there, he starts to slow down a little bit, kind of gliding. Now, if he was going full speed the entire time, I think that has a decent chance of being completed. Um, just overall, don't really know who to like 100% blame it on. I think A-Chan slowed down a little bit. And then up front, Tua made the correct decision. Want to see him, you know, throw a perfect ball. Also had some pressure in his face. It's also tough to kind of complete that to a deep ball to the running back down the field. I will say this was, I had to show this one just because it was definitely the best play of the day. 
They're in their Tampa 2 look again that the Titans have been running. And this time, this is a, a excellent throw. Like, from against Tyreek, this guy really has nothing challenging him down in the flat other than this, like, late route from the running back. And he gained a lot of depth. And this ball is coming, you know, out not even, like, a lot of anticipation either. And Tua just rips it out there. Perfect placement. Good job by Tyreek as well. That's where they found that success. That's how you kind of have to attack that coverage and make those, you know, hole shots versus defense. That's about the most difficult one they made in this game. It isn't super impressive. But um, guess what? They uh, they get down there first and 10 from like the 5-6 yard line, and they don't run the ball one single time. Just showing this play to show my disgust. <laughs> I hate fade routes. Stop calling this fade. Like, I get it. It's Tyreek Hill versus a backup corner. The other guy just got hurt. Um, but it just doesn't get... It's just such a low percentage play, in my opinion. I personally don't like running it. It obviously worked in that week one game versus the Chargers, and they're just like, well, we're sticking with it since... Just run the ball, please. But they've wasted two plays. One play where I think Tua scrambled for a couple yards. Second play, uh, the fade. Now on third down, you get sacked. The initial stuff's not there. Nothing's open. Tua starts to feel a little bit of pressure. He wants to kind of escape, work off script a little bit. These guys are starting to come in his face. If he was able to keep working to the outside here, Barrios probably was going to come open late and he could have found that. But then he ends up slipping and falling and then they all just pummel on top of him. Not great from Tua. He was slipping a little bit throughout this game. Uh, want to see him, you know, look a little more athletic. I mean, this will never be the main part of his game. Just too many missed opportunities. But I think the biggest issue here, while I don't love how the players executed these play calls, I don't want to see three straight passes because at the end, of, that's really what's going to happen in that scenario, especially with how well you're running the ball. And then you see what happened later on when you ran the ball down late. It would, uh, that to me is on coaching. They're third and medium from midfield. Dolphins having some success moving the ball. They weren't really going like three and out a ton, but then they get um, another sack here. They're basically uh, bracketing both Tyreek and Waddle. If you watch the Titans here, they have help over the top with this safety here. These two safeties are bracketing Waddle 100%, and then no one else is open. There's nothing really else to hit. You maybe hit a chan late, but I mean, that's like the last read in his progression and they just get enough pressure up front and there's just nowhere to go with that ball unfortunate not a lot of time given the deep titans had a good play call took away exactly where you wanted to look for it and then uh i think tua had a little bit of happy feet at times in this game and after that play you get a muffed punt and what do you do you run the ball multiple times and you get into the end zone just boom straight down get downhill toss they even scored on a toss play i don't care what it is like, these guys do a great job down blocking up front. Good job from Robert Jones. Winning that battle creates all that space for Moster, and he does a good job diving in there. Please do this way more often. Dolphins are great passing the ball, and they get a lot of big, explosive plays. But down in the red zone, it hasn't been pretty. Obviously, there's certain times where you have to pass the ball down in the red zone, but you need to... It can't be three straight passes. It, I'd rather it be three straight runs or at least two runs. Give me at least one. Two would be nice. Depending on the situation, it's not always, you know, black and white. But overall, uh, we need to see some more runs down the red zone because that's where the offense finally, you know, found some success down there. And here's the other red zone touchdown that they get after the, the what's it called? The fumble. Yeah. Then they get the toss up to Moster and he basically walks in the end zone. Good job from Ingold. I think Ingold had a pretty good game. If I had to think about players who, like, played individually well. I haven't watched everyone individually yet, but from what I've seen, you know, just going over the film a little bit, looking at it kind of like a big picture thing, I haven't looked a ton of individually. I think, you know, Ingold played well as a run blocker, even made a good play in the passing game. And then the offensive line run blocked well were pretty horrible in the passing game. Uh, two made a couple big plays, but overall, I would say struggled. Tyreek and Waddle, up and down day for them. Tyreek was hurt. I think, you know, Waddle got doubled a lot. And it was further, and then they took away those options, and I don't think anyone else really showed up. Cedric made a like a big play, but other than that, it was uh, not a ton of work from the rest of the offense. It's third and six. This is after the Titans just went down the field and scored right away. They ran the ball twice, and this is them trying to basically put the game away. They just get too much pressure bringing four instantly. There's only uh, his first read to this side of the field. Tyreek gets bracketed. Um, he starts to feel the pressure seeing that the Tyreek route's not going to be open. The only thing that was really open was Barrios off the break, but that wasn't really where you looked to that side. I want to see him probably work there next time just based on the numbers he's seeing to the bottom here and seeing Tyreek be bracketed. I think he's got to be a little bit quicker to get there 
personally, so not a great play from Tua. But also, there was a, it wasn't really blocked super well up front. He felt this pressure coming off the edge here, so he had to step up into the pocket. And they did this a lot with their D linemen. The guys who like were the crash guys, because they were twisting and stunting, right? This guy was crashing down, and the person who crashed down just ended up being like a spy. They would just float out and spy this, so Tua wasn't able to escape. And he almost, you know, fights for the first down, and I do. And also, I mean, all that stuff I just talked about doesn't even matter, because I'm pretty sure they called holding on this play on Eichenberg. Uh, right there. Yeah, they called holding. So none of that even mattered. It wouldn't have been counted either way. But yeah, that's uh, something I think the whole line could have been better at. Tua could have been better. He had the option to bury us, but I don't know the progressions straight up. So it's hard to say who's 100% fault it is, but just all around, not great from the offense. I would like to see it be a little more aggressive on this drive too, but with play calling. Then this is the final drive. Just going to show a few plays. They just get that pressure up front. They kept showing these looks. Jackson just loses here. It's actually a pretty good play from Tua to get this away. Uh, nothing was open anyways. Uh, it's a good job basically throwing that away. They kept giving this look with three guys to the side of the line. They would slide the to the right over there. Then they would, you know, stunt those guys. They would work all the way around. But Jackson just completely whiffs with his hands there. The guy hits him with like that ghost move under. I mean, that's an absolutely filthy move. Got to give him some credit. But yeah, just... Not a great way to sort of start out there on this drive. And then this is my opinion, the play where they basically lose it with this play call because they don't get out of bounds. The clock keeps running and now you're in a hurry. This is third and three. So now you're in a hurry to try to pick up the fourth down uh, and it's just bad all around. First of all, this is play calling in my opinion. I They basically have Tyreek doubled and Waddle doubled to both sides of the field. but like, And they're just leaving Smythe out here to this side of the field. Barris is running the wheel. That's never going to be open in man-to-man. -man. They're playing man-to-man -man and bracketing these two, but no one has a route to the middle of the field. How is nobody running a route to this area of the field? Look how much room is out here. I just don't get it. They're just doubled across the board. I mean, this is where the ball has to go. Like, two is reading this. Like, if he has a chance to hit Tyreek on the inbreaker, he throws it, but that's not there. So he has, this is set up to be thrown now to this, and they just are man-to-man. -man. Two on two here. HN makes the first guy miss. He probably should just get down upfield, but he tries to get out of bounds. I mean, I don't even know if he tried to get upfield. He would have got the first down either way. It was in a tough spot. Plus, I think he also, he, I mean, he did a good job making that guy miss here. But right here, he's just got to get vertical. If he gets vertical right here, he should get the first down. I do understand, like, the mindset of, like, oh, I also have to get out of bounds. But that cut right there kind of ruins it for them. I'm also pretty sure he might have got rolled up on right here too and it looked like he was even limping a little bit after the play which would be absolutely devastating it also looked like austin jackson was hurt a little bit on the final play i don't know if he was just gassed or what but so many injuries and this last play that i'm gonna break down fourth and two you're in a hurry you know things are out of sync and tua slips and falls they go to what they've been running all game with that tampa two He's kind of, you know, reading this side of the field. This probably should have been a legal contact as well because his first read is here, and he sees this corner squeezing it, so he's like, oh, I'm not going to throw that. This guy then pushes him, and then he probably could have thrown it, but then this safety, uh, Amani Hooker, who's been like that Tampa 2 linebacker, kind of takes away that lane, probably would have gotten Tyreek destroyed. He probably still should have gone with the ball there or try to hit Smythe. I understand why he's not going to Smythe personally. but uh, And then they get some decent pressure up front. He's kind of, you know, it's a little panicky as well i think this is a little bit on tua as well as the offensive line uh it's on both of them it could have been blocked better like he's just feeling it just collapses too quickly like these guys end up falling over which makes it look worse for tua but it collapses on him and he's just all the offensive linemen are around him they do this thing again where this guy basically turns into a spy when he's looping and uh he ends up slipping not he i don't think he's i think he just gets tripped up over uh I think that's Robert Jones. But yeah, he just trips over his offensive lineman and that kind of ruins the play. Just too much absolute chaos going on around him. Tough to go all around. And the Titans just did a great job. Got to give him credit. This video is absolutely way too long. Did help to talk it all, talk it all out too. Um, yeah, Tua played a bad game. I know some people will use this to, you know, talk about him being bad or whatever. But And you can definitely criticize him for his play in this game, but I think it's way too early. You know, people just want to use that to push their narratives like oh he's not the guy or whatever i mean if that's all you're going off based on this one game then that's ridiculous but this was a bad game from him he's got to be better than this and i think he will be the jets game is a tough matchup for him personally just because the jets have a very good defense but i do think they should still find a way to win even with all the injuries it will be a tough one though because they're playing their best ball uh after that texans game and the defense 
really has to step up from what they showed at the end of this game. So hopefully people are angry and they play good, sound football. A lot of dumb mistakes on both sides of the ball. If you guys enjoyed the video, make sure to leave a like, comment, subscribe. <laughs> Can't wait to read the comments on this one. I don't even know if people will watch this. So uh, see you guys next time. <laughs> Peace.